hybrid, or electric. What to buy? Electrification, the addition of batteries and electric motors to vehicles powertrain isn't just an idea anymore. The idea that was introduced more than 100 years ago has been actualized and grown to include electric vehicles of all shapes and sizes. With a myriad of technologies on board predominantly centered around efficiency and reduced emissions driving. So, as the world revolutionizes electric vehicles, there's also a lot of talk on hybrid cars and electric car technologies. And a lot of people are contemplating on which one to go for. Well, each option has its advantages and disadvantages, which are going to lead us into which of these technologies you should go for. Let's look into what makes each of these electrification technologies different. Note that most of the interesting facts you wouldn't want to miss are kept at the end of the video. Hybrids and electric vehicles represent opposite ends of the electrification spectrum. For some people that may not really understand or know the difference between two electrification technologies, let's look into it. As the name suggests, hybrids can provide the best of both worlds, teaming an electric motor with a gasoline engine. A vehicle is a hybrid if it's 100% gasoline fueled but doesn't rely solely on its gasoline engine for propulsion. Hybrids also have electric motors that sometimes power the car to delay the use of the gasoline engine and save fuel. But at times, both systems work together for added power. Hybrids generate the electric power they need to function through regenerative braking. Here's how it works. Their electric motors function as generators when you press the brake and the energy that's regenerated during braking is stored in a small battery for immediate use the next time you accelerate from rest. Full electric vehicles, on the other hand, have a battery that is large enough and an electric motor that is powerful enough to deliver adequate range and performance without the need to include an engine or gas tank at all. Also, they don't need fuel equipment such as a fuel pump, line, or even a fuel tank. The electric car battery gets charged by an off-board power source when it's plugged into a charging station or wall outlet. There are two types of hybrid vehicles, the standard hybrids and plug-in hybrids. Standard hybrids use regenerative braking and the internal combustion engine to charge a battery pack, providing supplemental electric power, while the plug-in hybrid uses both regenerative braking and power from an external source to generate supplemental electric power. Just like the standard hybrid, a plug-in hybrid has a gas-burning internal combustion engine that turns on when maximum power is necessary for acceleration or climbing a mountain grade. It also takes over when the battery pack reaches a minimum state of charge and can no longer power the vehicle itself. Like the plug-in hybrids, the standard hybrid doesn't require charging and cannot be charged at an electric car charging station. Plug-in hybrids generally have larger electric batteries than standard hybrids, with the ability to drive only on electric power and to charge which makes them similar to full electric vehicles. Typically, all types of hybrids have lower battery ranges compared to full electric vehicles, and the electrical capacity is designed more to supplement gasoline driving and to help maximize fuel efficiency. Some hybrids offer an electric-only driving mode, which may only be available for low speeds or short ranges. Many hybrids automatically draw power only from the electric motor below certain speeds, which is why they're often much more efficient in city driving conditions. The plug-in hybrid is equipped with a much larger battery pack than hybrids, so it can offer anywhere between 20 to 35 miles of electric-only driving range and up to freeway speeds. Standard hybrids, on the other hand, typically offer electric-only driving only at low speeds and only for a mile or two, and both types of hybrids are sometimes seen as an intermediary option in the transition away from fossil fuels and towards more renewable energy sources. A hybrid can be a great investment, depending on your driving needs and lifestyle. An important note about hybrids to remember is that although they do have an electric battery, it is smaller than the battery in a full electric vehicle and can only support a limited range of electric driving. So if you have a short daily commute or plan on using your car for mostly quick trips, you may be able to run electricity for the majority of your driving time. If this is the case, a hybrid may make sense, as you wouldn't have to use the combustion engine and spend money on gasoline very often. Conversely, if your commute is long and you want to take your vehicle on lengthier trips, a hybrid might not make sense. This is because driving long distances that exceed the battery range capacity in your hybrid will make visiting the gas station in your routine and you'll spend more money on fuel. A hybrid vehicle is most efficient at saving money when your commute is short. You can rely on small electric batteries for the majority of your driving time. One of the biggest benefits of using all electric vehicles is how it uses electricity far more than hybrid counterparts. When you charge your electric vehicle battery, most of the energy goes directly into the moving wheels of your car, which makes it a full electric vehicle and has a higher driving range which is awesome for lengthier trips. And also when it comes to fuel cost, full electric vehicles make less of a dent in your bank account. And talking about charging your full electric vehicle, it's quite easier nowadays unlike before when there were fewer charging stations. An increase in the adoption of electric vehicles has led to an increase in the construction of more public charging stations. And even if you want to make a local or a few hundred miles trip, you can use less expensive home chargers, which eradicate the need to worry about where to plug in. 
you can plug in your car when you get home and tell it to start charging when electricity prices are the lowest at night, and the next morning, you're ready to go. Aside from paying for fuel, there are other costs associated with owning a vehicle, which is maintenance. Maintenance costs in particular are a significant money sink for any car owner. Unfortunately, hybrids run into many typical maintenance issues that gasoline vehicles with internal combustion engines also experience. Engine oil, transmission fluid, coolant, and belt replacements can add up over the lifetime of a hybrid, albeit at a slower rate than gasoline vehicles that depend solely on their combustion engine. A full electric vehicle which uses an electric motor has fewer and simpler parts compared to a combustion engine which has many moving parts, so there is less to wear out in full electric vehicles. The need for changing or replacing oils, air filters, fuel filters, and other parts is eradicated with full electric vehicles, which further reduces maintenance costs. However, they still have maintenance expenses in the form of universal car issues like tire changes, insurance plans, and structural damages. The big exception to the maintenance is the issue of battery. Although both all-electric vehicles and hybrids are at risk of battery degradation, the all-electric battery is at a higher risk of degradation because it solely relies on energy from its battery. Because an electric car battery is the most important feature in the car, it's very expensive to replace. But the good news is that most will last well more than 100,000 miles, and the price of electric vehicle batteries does keep dropping thanks to new battery technologies. And another thing is rebates and incentives that come with electrified vehicles. If you buy a full electric car, not a hybrid, you get to take a one-time federal tax credit of $7,500. If you buy the plug-in version of the hybrids, the federal tax varies by vehicle. The hybrids are not zero emission, they produce tailpipe emissions. Even the plug-in hybrid produces emissions when using internal combustion engines. While a full electric vehicle that burns no gasoline or uses an internal combustion engine produces zero tailpipe emissions, which causes global warming and air pollution. Now that you've known the difference between these electrified vehicles, you can now decide on which one to buy based on your needs. But there is one thing you should know. Many countries have pledged climate neutrality and will already have plans laid out to ban the sale or use of gasoline and hybrid vehicles by 2030, even some by 2025 due to emissions problems. So join the green revolution and let's make the world a better place to live. Which of these electrified vehicles do you prefer, hybrid or full electric? What do you think about the future of electric vehicles in the years to come? Let's hear your views or opinions via the comments section. We'll be glad to hear from you. Please do not subscribe unless you are into electric vehicles because that is what this channel is all about. Now let's watch another fantastic video from our channel and I'll meet you there.